Hello friend, Daniel here with StockMusicLicensing.com I'm bringing you the best tips and strategies for selling your music on royalty-free libraries. Now, I want to talk to you today here very quickly about the three biggest misconceptions about royalty-free libraries. Number one, that you can't make money with royalty-free libraries. There's a lot of misinformation, a lot of overwhelm when it comes down to not only music licensing in general, but to sell in music on royalty-free libraries like Pond5, stock libraries like Audio Jungle, stock libraries like Music Vine, stock libraries like many, many, many others. Now, it's no secret that uh, subscription libraries are the new norm, and it's something that is pretty much has become the new normal, if you will, in music licensing, and specifically with royalty-free libraries. But the very first thing that I notice a lot of uh, misinformation is that you cannot really make any money with royalty-free libraries. Now, earning between $500 and $1,000 per month selling music on royalty-free library is not only very common, but that's the beginning stages for anybody that's starting out in music licensing. I have not only colleagues of mine, but students of mine who have been earning money every single month by doing the same thing. Me and my colleagues have been talking about this for the longest time now, trying to spread the word and try to really uh, show you that there is an easy way to get started in music licensing, and that is by selling your music on royalty-free libraries. You need to start making money today, not in five years. How can you plan ahead for five years if you're not making any money today? Second misconception, that you cannot get royalties if you sell your music on royalty-free libraries. Just because it says royalty-free library, it doesn't mean that you're not entitled for performance royalties. Nowadays, you can sell your music on Pond5 and places like Audio Jungle and still be affiliated with a PRO. So that means that you're entitled to get performance royalties when your music gets placed on TV. So this is a big misconception nowadays in the music licensing world. There's a lot of misinformation when it comes down to this topic. And it's right here the biggest problem with royalty-free libraries or with music licensing in general as a topic when it comes down to music licensing and what's the right path. Now the third misconception about stock music or royalty-free libraries, I should say, is that it's something that is so cheap and is so um, badly composed music. If you have music that you have recorded while you were in your sleep, maybe you can upload it and you should upload it to royalty-free libraries so at least they're not collecting dust in your hard drive so you can start earning some money. This is the biggest misconception of all. I can't tell you how many talented musicians and composers have submitted music to libraries like Audio Jungle, which is a stock in a royalty-free library, and they've been rejected because the music is just not good enough to be even called royalty-free. A lot of misinformation, a lot of overwhelm, a lot of messages. Okay, overwhelming misinformation is the biggest problem the newcomers and even experienced composers and musicians have when it comes to music licensing. Keep your eyes on subscription libraries. This is changing the industry as we speak, right in front of your eyes. If you want to deny this truth, you are in for a rude awakening when it comes down to music licensing. I hope this video finds you well. As always, rock and roll, and here's to your success.